Today we're unpacking public goods, why they are hard for markets to provide, how governments decide how much to produce. By the end, you will be able to explain free riding, the MB equals MC rule for public goods and political pitfalls that lead to government failure. Private versus public, start with the basics. Most things we buy are private goods. Two key features, rival, if I drink a bottle of water, you can't drink that same bottle. Excludable, the seller can keep non-payers out. Because sellers can charge, they can cover costs Cost and earn profit, market demand is easy to tap. Add up how many water bottles people want at each price and you'll get a nice demand curve. Competition tends to land us near the efficient quantity. Public goods are the opposite. Non-rival, my use doesn't reduce your Think national defense, street lights, GPS. Non-excludable, once it exists, you can't realistically keep non-payers from benefiting. If everyone can benefit without paying, many people will try to free ride. When that happens, true willingness to pay never shows up in the markets. The demand curve looks artificially low, sometimes so low that private firms produce nothing, even if the good is valuable to society. That's a demand side market failure street performers tons of people watch only a few toss money in a case the show is basically a public good the hat rarely covers the cost occasionally firms can bundle a public good with something excludable to pay the bills broadcast tv is classic non-excludable over the air but ad slots are excludable and rival but it doesn't apply to most public good selling ads funds the program it's a neat workaround but it doesn't apply to most public goods philanthropy can cover small location public goods like fireworks and public art. For big essential ones, national events, universal, kindergarten through 12th grade, we typically rely on government, which can finance them through taxes instead of ticket sales. For private goods, we add quantities across people at each pride. For public goods, everyone consumes the same quantity, so we add a willingness to pay across people at each quantity, the vertical sum. That gives us a collective marginal benefit curve. Marginal benefit, the vertical sum to marginal cost to provide one more unit. The efficiency quantities were marginal benefit equals marginal curve. That is the point where the last unit we fund is worth exactly what it costs. Imagine highway plans for the modest widening of the massive six lane builds. Each step has a marginal cost and delivers marginal benefit. Do the plans where marginal benefit equals more than greater than marginal cost? Stop when marginal benefit falls below marginal cost. That's how we avoid both underbuilding and over building. Some goods are technically excludable but create big spillover benefits. Think education, preventative health care, libraries, and local roads. Led to the market, we underproduce them, so governments often step in or subsidize a raise output closer to the social optimum. If the economy is fully employed, shifting toward public and quasi-public goods means shifting away from some private good. Taxes reduce private purchasing power. Government then redirects those resources into the public project voters want. Public choice theory applies economic thinking to politics. Even with good intentions, voting systems can misfire. Two classic voting failures. Number one, inefficient no. A project with total benefits greater than total cost can still lose if a majority individual pays more than they personally get. Number two, inefficient yes. A project with total cost greater than total benefits can pass if a majority individual gains more than they pay. Paradox of voting. Pairwise, majority votes can cycle. The group can prefer A over B, B over C, and C over A. No stable best choice. Outcomes can depend on the order of votes, not true underlying preferences. Under majority rule with stable preferences, the media voter often does determines the outcome. This helps explain why policy tends to gravitate toward the center and why people feel government is too big or too small at the same time. Quadratic voting helps people buy votes at rising quadratic costs to express intensity of preference. It can reduce inefficient outcomes in theory, but it's not a cure-all and it's rarely used in practice. Even when government knows what citizens want, execution can still be inefficient. Common sources, number one, principal agent problems. Voters' principles hire policy politicians and agents may pursue re-election budgets or perks instead of pure marginal benefit greater than marginal cost efficiency. Number two, special interest effect or port. Small groups with big gains lobby hard. Costs are spread thinly across many taxpayers. That dynamic can pass subsidies or earmarks with low social return. Number three, rent seeking. Using political channels to grab income above what's needed to provide a service. Via tariffs, targeted tax breaks, excessive license 
processing or tailor subsidized shifts resources away from higher value uses. Number four, limited and bundled choice. Bowlers choose candidates with bundles of policies, not a Larkarte item. You often, some policies you dislike to get the ones you want, inherent course allocation. Number five, bureaucratic inefficiency. No profit and loss tax weak incentives and political insulation can dull the drive to cut costs or innovate. Agencies can be hard to shrink even the programs underperform. Number six, regulators can be influenced by the industry they regulate. Deregulation can help if competition disciplines firms. Otherwise, externalities or monopoly power can make regulation necessary. Number seven, corruption. Abuse of public power for private gain undermines efficient allocation and trust. Campaign finance rules try to limit undue influence, but gray areas remain. Bottom line on institutions. Markets are imperfect. Governments are imperfect. The goal isn't perfect, but better. Use markets where they allocate well. Use policy to fix clear failures and assign political rules that minimize waste from free riding, banning sentences, and capture. If you guys like this video on public goods and finishing amount and quasi-public goods and public choice and government failure, make sure you like the video. Check out the next economic course that we have for you guys. Go to Soap Academics to Carl about the latest October merch. See you guys in the next one. We out.